around the world every week, either way through Ben Q, the Baptist area, high school sports, on the air at 102.1, online at kjfmradio.com and on the KJFM radio app. Now to the diamond for high school baseball on your area sports leader, KJFM radio. And good evening and welcome to Bowling Green High School. Mark Fronick, Matty Ingram here tonight for an EMO match, uh, matchup as the Bowling Green Bobcats welcome in the Van Far Indians. This game was pushed back because of the storms we had earlier. It might uh, end early because the storms we ha will have later. So uh, we're going to try and get this one in. The teams are on the field. Bowling Green is warm up. Van Far is warming up now. And we'll talk about this when we start the pregame show for you next on KJFM and WBBA. And welcome back to Bowling Green High School, getting ready for the Bobcats and the Van Far Indians. And uh, for Bowling Green, kind of a, a different kind of year, kind of a, a rebuild, Maddie. Uh, three and ten on this season, not where this team wants to be at this point in the year. Yeah, there were quite a few upperclassmen that should have been on the roster this year, but they've made some choices to not play this season. And so there's a lot of underclassmen that are getting some starts for Bowling Green. And um, not necessarily a bad thing, but playing varsity baseball as underclassmen can be a change of speed and a change of pace just like any other sport and so that's kind of why we see that record and they're still playing those that tougher schedule with some bigger schools yeah and uh, on the other side of the coin van far we thought we're, we're in a reset or a rebuild, and they've come out and hung around the 500 mark this year. Yeah, they've had some pitchers that have been able to throw strikes, and that's been the big story of teams having success in the area because you don't really get to see all that much of that. Mm -hmm. You might have one pitcher that can do it, but they've been able to, to stay in ball games because there's pitchers that can throw strikes and keep them there. It's the Indians visiting the Bobcats, an EMO matchup, and we'll look at our keys to the game for you after this on KJFM and WBBA. Thank you. 
And our keys to the game for uh, these two teams, Bowling Green and Van Farm, Maddie, uh, well, you first off want to be prepared. Yes. And uh, we don't actually have a, a lineup for Bowling Green yet because uh, uh, Coach Matt Jane is, uh, it just finished it and ran out and uh, joined the conversation at home plate. <laughs> So uh, yeah. I think uh, we're going to be uh, getting that about uh, the time of first pitch. We might not have it for our uh, starting oh. lineups. Oh, oh, it just came in the door. It's like a script that we're just yeah. tearing off yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> so be prepared. First thing, uh, uh, Van Farr, uh, you can't be, uh, uh, I guess, wrapped up in the past. Uh, uh, Bowling Green has kind of dominated this uh, this matchup the, the past several years. Yeah. Uh, so you can't be uh, – wrapped up in that you got to play the team that's on the field this year that's exactly right and with a day like today anything can really happen for either side um and it's windy it's cold it's been raining you've had a delay so who's going to come out of this and be the mentally tough kids that take the field and are prepared for the battle that they have because you want to win those emo conference games and it just it helps your seating in the postseason and, and it makes you look better so you always want to win when you can get it and uh, like we said uh, in, the, in the Clopton game the other night, uh, you've got to be the one. Uh, I think the, the first four innings are, are going to be the most important, uh, mm -hmm. more than the last three. So you've got to be able to adapt to, to pitcher and uh, umpire at home plate uh, and then be aggressive to that what, what's offered to you. Yeah, if there's strikes that are coming your way, you better be swinging too because we've seen a lot of games where – People are just sitting there in take mode, and then all of a sudden they're getting rung up because they're looking at strike three. So make sure you're swinging those bats and, and trying to get some runs on the board. And you don't know how long this weather is going to hold up. Mm -hmm. So if you can get out to a lead and then, you know, this game's cut short, you may come out with the win. Those are our keys to the game. Our starting lineups, which we have now, are coming up on KJFM and WBBA. And your starting lineups for this matchup. First for the Man Far Indians, they'll lead it off with the shortstop, number 15, Malik Douglas. Then the catcher, number 6, Gibson Condi, gets a start. Pitcher in the three spot, number 22, Reese Coel. Uh, the first baseman bats cleanup, number 21, Carson Huff. Then the second baseman, number 2, Gage Gibson. Designated hitter in the sixth spot, number 13, Ronnie Stanich. Our right fielder bats seventh, number one, Garrett Hopke. Then the center fielder, number 17, Gavin Gaston. And the, the nine spot belongs to the third baseman, number 11, Brady Pulse. And uh, flexing in left field will be number eight, Blake Foster. For the Bowling Green Bobcats, I'll lead it off with the pitcher, number 13, Zach Gibson. Left fielder bats second, number five, Brennan Scherter. Catcher in the three spot, number 44, Rowan Milosevic. Then in the cleanup spot, the first baseman, number 11, Eli Grody. Batting fifth is the third baseman, number 33, Graydon Coleman. Then the center fielder, number eight, Brady Huber. Batting seventh is the right fielder, number two, uh, Josh McDonald. And then the second baseman, number 18, Manny Orff. And batting ninth and playing shortstop is number 26, Keegan Smith. So again, for Van Farr, it's Douglas County, Coel, Huff, Gibson, Stanich, Hopke, Gaston, and Pulse with uh, Foster playing left field. 
uh, fielding only in that flex position. And for Bowling Green, it's Gibson, Schurter, Milosevic, Grody, Coleman, Huber, McDonald, Orff, and Smith. Those are your starting lineups. It looks like we're getting close to first pitch. In fact, it uh, looks like Gibson is taking his warm-up tosses, so we'll take a quick break. Come back with your first pitch after this on KJFM and WBBA. Just about ready for baseball. In fact, the leadoff batter, Malik Douglas, digs in. And the first pitch of the ball game is fouled off for strike one. We are underway here at 5.52 p.m. Just about an hour after the original start time. New baseball. Out to Gibson, and the next pitch is in the dirt to even things up at one and one. One ball, one strike to the leadoff batter, Malik Douglas. Set the defense here after this first batter. And a swing and a miss, one and two. Good velocity on the fastball there from Gibson. One-two pitch from Zach is kind of hit off the fists and into center field for a base hit. Just got enough of that one to push it past the infielders in the air, and the leadoff man is on for Van Farr. Set the defense for Bowling Green. It is Schurter in left, Huber in center, and McDonald, Jack McDonald in right. The third baseman is Coleman. Shortstop is Smith. Second baseman is Orff, and over at first is Grody. Behind the plate, Milosevic and Zach Gibson deals. A strike called on the first pitch to Gibson Condy. The wind is whipping. Swing and a miss. Runner goes. Throw down. Not in time. Stolen base for Douglas. That was a good read by Douglas to see that and that pitch going out. Had a little bit of an off speed to it. Milosevic had a good pop. His toss was just a little short. 0-2 the count. And the next is strike three called. Got him. Looking in with a runner in scoring position, there's now one out for Reese Cowell. This could get real nasty real quick weather-wise. <laughs> they knew that going in. They had the tarp, which is why we're even playing right now. It rained pretty good here for a while, so having that tarp was – needed especially to get a game in today first pitch of ball the next inside ball two missed outside missed inside two and oh to the pitcher quell long look from zach gibson and the next low for ball three having trouble finding the plate a little bit here to the three-man in the order. 3-0 pitch outside, and he walked him on four pitches. There's two aboard. That'll bring in Carson Huff. He's a four-hitter. He'll be playing first base today for the Indians. And this is not the situation you want to be in with less than two outs and the heart of the order in there and a strike called on the first pitch to the cleanup man, Huff. A little bit of a delay in the call, but it was a nice pitch on the outside corner from Gibson. Misses with the curve. Even things up at a ball and a strike. Not a lot of sleeves that we see. No. <laughs> outside, two and one with the fastball. Looks like Gibson 
kind of lost his footing there, had to overcorrect in the middle of the pitch, leading to that being a ball. Foul tip held on to by Milosevic, evens the count at two and two. Runners at first and second, one out. Big pitch here. The 2-2 two -two to Huff. Swung on and missed. Took something off and gets the strikeout. Both outs have come from strikeouts. He had a looking strikeout, and then we have Carson Huff with the swinging strikeout there. Something Gibson does very well is change speeds. Brings in Gage Gibson, the second baseman. Van Farr looking for a two-out RBI. Swing and a miss. He went up there heck and came up empty. The 0-1. Swung on a miss. 0-2. Seems like he's battled back very well after the walk. Blue pit and a walk. Two strikeouts in there. Runner goes from second. And where was that pitch? Yeah, Called the ball. A, just a little low. Look good from up here. I'm kind of confused as to why Kowal didn't take second yeah. whenever third base was stolen. And he'll yeah. basically walk to second now. Maybe it was a strategy to try to Confuse. get the runner, ho runner home. Yeah. Now it's second and third with two out and a 1-2 count to Gage Gibson and low as well. He is very forcefully pointing at the ground. Yeah, yeah, he was emphatic. That's our old buddy back there. <laughs> One of the most vocal home plate umpires you'll have. The 2-2 pitch, swung on and missed. Gibson strikes out the side, a walk and a hit, both stranded at second and third. We played a half inning. Here from Bowling Green, no score with the Bobcats coming up. Half inning in the books. Let's set the defense for Van Farr. It's Foster in left, Gaston in center, and Hopke in right. Poles is the third baseman, Douglas at short, Gibson at second base, and Carson Huff at first. Gibson Condi behind the plate. Reese Cowell taking his warm-up tosses before he faces Zach Gibson. So pitcher against pitcher to start things off here for the Bowling Green Bobcats. Coach Cameron Huff had nothing but good things to say about Reese Cowell, and he's had some mile markers this season, and just being able to go out there and be that ace for this club and helping them get to some wins this season, which is, is kind of hard, especially with what we were talking about initially with thinking it was going to be a rebuild, but having some pieces that they're able to, to be able to build around and adjust. So Zach Gibson digs in, right-hand batter. You can see the sleeves of Coel whipping in the wind up there on the mound. And his first pitch is high for ball one. One ball, no strikes to the Bowling Green leadoff hitter. This one fought off one and one. Fouled off over the first base dugout. Oh, they They're called that first that one first a strike. That first one was a strike. That was way high, and he didn't move There was his no arm. gesture, yeah. So it's 0-2. That one bounces in. A ball and two strikes now. Interesting. And the 1-2 pitch didn't break. Evens the count at 2-2. Two 
Gibson kind of just leaned out of the way of that one as it curved inward towards him. And the next is in the dirt, and the count goes <laughs> full. <laughs> he is really going at it with that point today. Yeah. We know when it's low. Yeah. There's no question about why it wasn't a strike. He will full, let you know. Full count to Gibson, and this one is hit in the air. Oh, breaking in, now going back, and it's over the head. That thing took off it on did. the center fielder, Gavin Gaston, and it's going to be at least a double. The throw comes to the third, and he is safe. Gets away, and it did not go into the dugout, so he'll stay at third base. Good job by Gibson to read that as it was deep in the park and it was going to be a long toss. You know that the grass is wet. He was going to have some trouble with it. He forced him to try to make that throw. So a leadoff triple on a 3-2 pitch. And off the bat, it looked like it was going to be short center. Caught that wind and just went all the way almost to the fence. And it is a deep fence here at Bowling Green. Now the lefty, Brendan Scherter, digs in. All the way back, all the way in. And he takes a strike called. 0-1. Bowling Green trying to take the lead here early. The 0-1. Called a strike. 0-2. Likes the top of the zone today, so it's already happened in back-to-back -back at bats. If I'm in the on-deck circle, that's something I'm watching for. No balls, two strikes now, two shorter. That one too high. One and two. We can feel the wind. We can hear yeah. the wind up here in our broadcast position. We'll stay here for as long as the building lets us. Yeah. A ball and two strike count. Coel's pitch. Outside. Nice job by Condi. Coming out of his stance to get that one two and two Gibson takes his lead off third and the pitch swung on and missed that's the first out and every out we've recorded so far has been a via out. the strikeout yeah Scherter was just reaching for that one he got fooled and you could tell he was his hand path was for an inside pitch and then realized he was going to have to cast out and missed everything so we don't have any flags but I believe that the wind is blowing out, and Rowan Milosevic would like to get one to <laughs> drive, and he took a big swing at the first one, came up empty. Coel has his sign. Comes set from the stretch. Delivers that one up high, one and one. So each team has had a runner reach third base. Here in the first inning, fan far left runners at second and third. This one popped out of play on the first base side. One and two, the count to Rowan Milosevic. Got somebody looking on from the outfield. <laughs> we got someone popping their head over. Oh, uh, a truck. Oh, okay. <laughs> they pulled up the stop and watch. Swung on and missed. The ball got away, but Milosevic was heading back toward the dugout. And that is five outs recorded, five strikeouts between the two pitchers. Yeah, one of those situations, again, where batters are just getting tied up. And obviously the first inning, it's hard to understand a pitch sequence, but you've got to talk to the person in front of you and see what, ask them what they had seen. Brings in the cleanup man, Eli Grody. Two outs now with a runner at third and a strike called. The 0 1 up high, 1 and 1. Long look from Coel. And that one up high. Two balls and a strike. Two outs. Runner at third base for the Bobcats.
That wind is whipping now right into the face of the right-hand pitcher in the stretch position, and this one has popped up. Wind's going to do something with this, and it is caught by the second baseman, Gage Gibson. Ooh, I thought that one was <laughs> going to be between second and third. It ends up between first and second, and that is the first out uh, that hasn't been recorded by a strikeout. Bowling Green leaves a runner at third base, and we played one full inning here from Bowling Green High School. No score between the Bobcats and the Indians on KJFM and WBBA. High school's coverage brought all season long by Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats, State Farm agents Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, Meyer Implement Company, and Ingram Plumbing. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. Call me, and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, loving our small town life. One Multi-Sports Complex in Bowling Green is your year-round indoor facility to get your softball and baseball work in. Call Courtney at 573-324-2193 or Matthew at 573-324-8282 to schedule an appointment and to inquire about memberships. One Multi-Sports Complex just off BFW Road in Bowling Green. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwallader Real Estate, Geared Up, and Pike Lincoln Technical Center. One inning in the books, no score. Both teams leave runners in scoring position. The Bobcats had a leadoff triple and couldn't get the run pushed across. Yeah, that's tough and just a great job to battle by Reese Cowell to come out of that. And a pitch low and away to start the second inning, ball one. And Gibson's next is called a strike. It's six, seven, eight for the Indians. Ronnie Stanich. Then it'll be Hopke and then Gaston. The 2 0. -oh. Excuse me. You call that a strike? No, 3 0. No, 3 0. -oh. His arm movements are deceiving sometimes. <laughs> the only thing we know is whenever the ball is low. Exactly. Get over fastball there to make it three and one. Stanich, Hopke, Gaston, if anyone gets on, Pulse will bat in the nine hole. The three one pitch. Call the ball just outside. Good, good frame, framework from Milosevic and not a bad spot, just not where it needed to be. Needed to be a little bit closer into the zone, especially 3-1. The leadoff man has reached in every half inning so far. Three for three. And we've already racked up five strikeouts. Flashes a bunt, but pulls it back. Yeah, it didn't look like he really pulled that back. No. <laughs> Kept it out there till the absolute last second. Yeah, but uh, they're gonna they're gonna say pull it back, give it the ball on the board. So the one zero pitch swung on and missed. That was a big cut. It was. Hopke. He is just a freshman. Listen to that win. The one one. Bunted in the air, and it'll land foul in front of the Bobcat third baseman, Graydon Coleman. Coleman got a good jump on that, but it was just a little bit too far up the line, and I think the wind hung it in the air for a lot longer than you would probably like if you're Hopke, but uh, he was just playing so far back, the cut to get to it was not doable. Especially with the amount of uh, water in the grass oh, yeah. here. Yeah. Slick. Swung on and missed. Runner goes. Throw is in the center field. Took off on him. He's going to make it to third. Bobbles it in the outfield, having a little bit of trouble. He's going to try and score. Here comes the throw to the plate. Not in time. Van Farr on the air leads the ball game by a score of one to nothing. A couple of wild throws there and able to go first to home off of a walk. So that's just unfortunate for Gibson, but it's just one of those situations where you got to take care of the baseball. Now 
That'll bring in the eight hitter, Gavin Gaston. One nothing Van Farr here in the top of the second. Fought that one to the screen. 0 and 1. Yeah, you, you get the pitch, you get the strikeout. And I think that was probably a wind aided throw. Mm -hmm. Just took off and sailed into center field. Then you had a little bit of trouble with it, and then that ball's going to be wet. You've got to pick it up and you've got to throw it. And so it wasn't a bad toss in from Huber. It's just, it's tough to beat it. Yeah. whenever you're battling a wet ball and you're battling the wind, too. Throw is up the third baseline just enough. There's strike three called. Got him looking. A foul, a bunt foul, and a called third strike, and that'll bring in the number nine man, Brady Poles, with two outs. It is getting dark. There's a strike called on the first pitch to the Van Far third baseman. Outside, one and one. It really sounds up here. I don't know if the mics are picking it up. Like, we're in a war zone. Or, yeah. Or at least an indoor shooting range. That or somebody's breaking up some concrete. Yeah, there's a <laughs> strike called one and two. The number 11 for Van Farr, Brady Pulse. And a swing and a miss. Another strikeout. He strikes out the side for the second straight inning, but gives up a run on a, well, a walk and a pair of errors. And we go to the bottom of the second inning. Bowling Green trailing Van Farr one to nothing on KJFM and WBBA. Sports coverage brought to you all season long by One Multi Sports Complex, Pike County Mutual Insurance Agents Corey Buchanan and Shelly Clucky, Gambino's Eatery, and Hannibal Medical Group. Hi, this is Shelly Clucky with Pike County Mutual Insurance Company. We appreciate the value of working hard and making sure you've taken steps to make sure you're prepared for whatever comes your direction. Best wishes to all of our area athletes for another amazing season from myself and Corey Buchanan at Pike County Mutual Insurance Company on the square in Bowling Green. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Rick Rodhouse Insurance Agency, People's Bank and Trust, Pike County Health Department, and Missouri State Representative Chad Perkins. Did you see that last warm-up toss from Reese Coel? Knocked off his hat, and it flew almost all the way to the second base bag. <laughs> We've had a lot of missing hats due to the the wind already this game, but uh, that that sounds like a problem he's going to have to face throughout the course of this next inning. Yeah, yeah get, get, get him a bobby pin or something. Yeah, something's going to have to pin it down to him. Velcro, something. See, I, I – I, I, I get the Velcro effect the way I uh, I shave my head. If I if I bick <laughs> it, nothing's going to stay on my head. But if I leave a little bit of stubble, it is the, the Velcro stay. effect. Yeah. <laughs> so for uh, Bowling Green, where are we at with? Uh, It'll be five, six, seven. A swing and a foul back to the screen, on the first pitch to Graydon Coleman. Bowling Green's gone up there hacking. Yeah, it was Gibson who led off with a triple to center field with a ball that just carried over the head of Gavin Gaston, and there really wasn't much he could do about it. But would like to get something started here as they're down one to nothing. That one also fouled back to the screen off the end of the bat of Coleman. It's 0-2. No balls, two strikes. Coel's ready. Long look from the full wind. Still looking. And finally, time called by Coleman. Pitch clock. <laughs> we don't have one of those. No. no. Not yet. I feel like it would have to be faster than 30 seconds. Yeah. Though. Yeah. That one outside, a ball and two strikes to Coleman. Coleman, Huber, McDonald. If anyone gets on, Manny Orff. Again, a long look, and now a Coel 
Puts one in the dirt back to the screen, two and two. A little bit of a mix-up as that was off the inside palm of Condi's glove, and he was kind of looking like, why, what's happening? Why did that go there? That was not the pitch I ordered. Yeah. Two and two, and the next is inside, and the count goes full. Had him 0-2, now three and two. Two Coleman leading off this bottom of the second inning. Bowling Green trailing one nothing. Well, winds, fires, and this one is hit into center field. A little bit better uh, judge of this <laughs> yeah. one is Gavin Gaston. He puts it away for out number one. It was a good read from Gaston. As he played a little bit deeper that time, and his first step was back, which is always what you'd like, but he didn't have to adjust nearly as much. Brings in Brady Huber. Huber bats from the right-hand side. This one hit into center, and this one will drop. The hat came off, the center fielder Gaston, and the ball dropped in front of him for a one-out hit. Didn't want to get burned by the wind again, but we were just talking about how great the adjustment was, and then it burns him there. That's how baseball works. Yeah. <laughs> wind will die right when you don't want it to. That takes us to Jack McDonald. Jack's the right fielder. Where's number two? He's ready. Coel from the stretch. Instead of check on the runner at first. And back in safely is Huber, who has some speed. Nice toss back to the bag. And it's a pretty good turn. McDonald again ready. Coel delivers. And takes a ball low. Kind of threw his hip, hips at it, but no bat. And the 1-0. On its way, showing bunt, pulls back, takes a ball. 2-0. Interesting, wasn't showing bunt the first pitch, no. was that time. One out, runner at first. And the next, runner doesn't go, and this one's hit into left, and it'll be down. Back-to-back -back singles. Huber almost took it too slow from first to second. The throw came in, but it was offline to get the force. Two on, one out. Good job by McDaniel to turn his hands and hips on that one, and he inside outed it more than anything, and was able to drive it. That'll bring in the number eight man, Manny Orff. He bats from the right-hand side as well, shows bunt, takes a ball. That was in on his hands. There was a little bit of a delay in pulling that bat back. His weight was going one way, his bat was going the other. <laughs> I think they called it a strike, though. They did, and he offers that one as well, 2-0. and oh. Looks like he's trying to bunt for a hit, but the runners aren't on the move, so a little bit questionable in his approach there. The 0-2 gets away, and the runners will advance. No throw, either side, and now it's second and third with one down, and I... One ball, two strike count to Orff. Swung and fouled back to the screen. Still a one ball, two strike count. So Orff took a big cut there. Trying to get these runners across. Bowling Green trails one to nothing. They've had runners... At third base, each of the first two innings. That one low, two and two. For someone who looked like he was giving himself up early in the count, he's come back and had a pretty good at bat. Even now, two, two. And that one gets back to the screen. Uh-oh. Out at home. 
the ball came right back, and Huber was already committed at that point. The other runner advances to third, but now there's two outs and a 3-2 count to Orff. That was just a lucky bounce back. It's not always you're going to get that nice hop back to the catcher. Typically, it'll run down one of the sides, and so I don't think it was a bad decision by Huber, but as you said, he had committed, and there was yeah. nowhere else for him to go. So um, he tried to scamper around and get past it, but couldn't do very much. Yeah, if you see his tracks there. He was uh, about two foot in front of the plate sliding. 3-2, swung on and missed, and that'll end the inning. Bowling Green again strands a runner at third base and still trail Van Farr one to nothing as we head to the third on KJFM and WBBA. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by A Taste of Philly, State Farm Insurance Agent Cindy Blaylock, Central State Bank of Illinois, and Eolia Landscape Supply. Gambino's in Louisiana open Wednesday through Saturday. Enjoy lunch options until 4 and Gambino's dinner menu from 4 to close, including the popular Make Your Own, your choice of pasta, meat, and sauce. Other entrees including lasagna, pot roast, and specials with a variety of beer and wine available to enjoy with your meal. Wednesday through Saturday at Gambino's. If it's not on the menu, we don't talk about it. At Hannibal Regional Medical Group in Bowling Green, we're not only helping kids grow stronger, we're helping grow a stronger community for the future. Pediatrician Dr. Barbara White provides the specialized care your child needs from birth through college, right here at home. From routine checkups to immunizations, we're equipped to handle all of your child's health needs. To schedule an appointment, just call 573-324-2241. Hannibal Regional Medical Group in Bowling Green. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by NOAA Builders, Castile's Color Wheel, Eagle's Nest Inn, People's Savings Bank, and Pepsi. We head to the third inning here at Bowling Green. one nothing Van Farr as they come to bat. It'll be at the top of the order. Douglas, Condi, Coel. And Gibson has been fantastic from the bump as he's already recorded six strikeouts. And this one is in the left field, and it's going to get down and go almost to the wall slowly. Runner into second base, and it'll be a leadoff double, and that is three straight innings with the leadoff man on for Van Farr. That is two for two today for Douglas as he had a single up the middle his first at bat, and now he said, I'll take a double and sit. A single stolen base was stranded at third. This time a leadoff double. And that ball is probably soaked. Rain is starting to pick up again as people are starting to move. and Swing and a miss on the first pitch to Gibson Condi. One of three Gibsons in the ball game. The only one whose first name, <laughs> first is, name Gibson. is Gibson. Yeah. Gibson against Gibson. Swung on and missed 0-2. You can tell that the pressure doesn't really impact Gibson all that much. He's worked really well with the pressure of base runners. Gets another looking strikeout there to make it strikeout number seven of the day. Mm. Yeah, that's something Van Farr has taken a, a lot of strike three calls already in this ball game. Yeah, we have this one hit in the air. Center field moving in on it is Huber moving, moving, makes the catch. And it's not nearly deep enough to advance the runner, and there's two away. Was in one of those no fly zone areas where they normally land for a hit, but it was a pretty good run and read from Huber to get in there that quickly. Brings in Carson Huff. He struck out his last at bat. Lines this one into center field over the head of the yep. center fielder. And it's going to get down uh, for a, an RBI double. He's going to try for three. Throw was slow getting in there, and he is into third base with a triple. 2 nothing. Van Farr here in the top of the third inning. 
Huber was running in. It was one of those situations where he couldn't really judge where the ball was going, running in, and tried to save it as that ball continued to carry from the wind, like we saw with uh, Gibson's triple in the bottom half of the first inning. But that's just one of those that is leading to a little bit of trouble for the Bobcats. And with the rain moving in, I think Van Farr, they've come up there swinging at the first pitch all inning long, and now bunting back to the screen is Gage Gibson. The final Gibson. Lots of Gibsons here. Zach against Gage. As the rain continues to fall, that one bounces in to even the count at one and one. Two outs runner at third. A run in for the Indians. They lead 2 nothing. Bunts it again in the air and foul territory one and two. Interesting strategy with two outs mm -hmm. and at this point in your lineup. I mean, he's the five-hole hitter, but they also have to make the play, and if you can extend the inning, why not? We know that Gibson has speed. One, two, the count. Gibson a long look. And the pitch is swung on and missed. He strikes him out. Van Farr leaves a runner at third, but pushes a runner across on the RBI triple. And we head to the bottom of the third inning. 2 nothing Van Farr over Bowling Green on KJFM and WBBA. Area High School Sports coverage brought to you all season long by Cellular and Satellite, Pike County Memorial Hospital, Eccles Farm Market, and Community State Bank of Missouri. Think about all that's important to you, your family, your possessions, and your future. Pick up the phone and call Rick Rodhouse from Country Financial. He, along with his staff, will assist you with insurance coverage to protect what matters most in addition to preparing you for the future. Best of all, Rick will take the time to get to know you and find solutions for your budget. For coverage you need at a price you can afford, contact Rick Rodhouse Insurance Agency in Pleasant Hill to chat about your insurance needs today. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats. State Farm agents Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, Meyer Implement Company, and Ingram Plumbing. Every run you can get in the early innings, very important with the rain here and around the uh, area. And Van Fars pushed two across so far and lead the Bobcats 2-0 as we head to the bottom of the third inning. 9-1-2, and two, Keegan Smith, Zach Gibson, Brendan Scherter. Been a good response from Van Farr, and it seems like things have been working in their favor. If they can hold on here, will be the a test because we are both battling. Both sides are both battling rain. Mm -hmm. Coel from the full wind starts the inning with a bunt that deadens in between home and the pitcher's mound, and he is safe at first by a hair. That was a nice, nice stretch by Carson Huff at first base to try to get that out. He almost went into the full splits, and he had to do a scoop in that process. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, doing just an, good enough to hold on there, but really stretched it out, almost made that an out for the Indians. For someone who is completely unflexible, I had a pretty good stretch at first base. Not anymore, but back I, in the day. I used to stretch well at – First base, but Ball I don't gets think away, I can do it now. And the runner will advance now into scoring position with nobody out. On a ball to the top of the order for Zach Gibson. Bowling Green has a pretty big backstop, and I wouldn't say it's deep by any means, but if it hits the pad wrong, it can go running. So you want to make sure that you keep that ball in front of you, which is exactly what Condi did. Ball high. 2-0. Kowal against Gibson. And the next is taken low for ball three. Kowal was able to pitch around a triple in the bottom of the first. And now I'll have to pitch around two on and nobody out here in the bottom of the third inning. After a walk to Gibson, it'll bring in Brendan Scherter. Scherter struck out his last at bat. 
two spot is a lefty. What did Scherter do the first time out? He struck out. This time he lays a bunt down the third baseline. Looks like everyone's going to be safe. No one was covering first, and the bases are loaded with nobody out, full of Bobcats. Third baseman um, Pulse was covering the bag, so that was the strategy that Coach wanted. Kept the third baseman back at the bag, and that was just smart for Schroeder to push it down the third baseline, and that results in a hit. Quell's foot slipped a little bit as he planted, but it didn't matter. The first baseman was charging. The second baseman didn't cover. So the bases are loaded for Milosevic. And he rips through a fastball 0-1. He was swinging pretty big his last at bat as well. Took some nice cuts. Just missing. Nobody out. Bases loaded. Bobcats trailing 2-0 to Van Far. The 0-1 to Milosevic. Ooh, man, he had... All of that one just missed back to the screen. He's got him timed up now. He'd like to knock two runs in if he can to tie this game up. He's looking like he wants to knock in four runs. <laughs> the 0-2, Coel should change speeds here. And this one hit over the shortstop into center field. One run is in. Here comes the tying run. And it gets away from the shortstop cutoff, and it's tied 2-2. Two to two. Milosevic stayed at first, so runners at the corners, and the Bobcats have tied things up on the RBI single, two-run single by Rowan Milosevic. Brings in Eli Grody. He flied out to second baseman, his last at bat. Chance to give the Bobcats the lead. Takes a pitch up high, 1-0. and oh. He knew the off-speed was coming and just waited on that. Drove it over the shortstop, Douglas. Up high, two balls and no strikes. This is the first bit of adversity, real trouble we've seen Coel in. Mm hmm He, that runner at third in the first inning didn't seem to bother him any. This one fouled off. And the count two and one. Still nobody out for Bowling Green. With Milosevic running from first to second, would you give up a, a run to get the double play? Uh, I don't think so. This one grounded slowly to third. Played on a hop by Poles. His throw across gets away. Bowling Green has taken a lead. He's going to stay at first. Milosevic all the way to third base. 3-2 Bobcats. I think he was going to beat it out anyway. Yeah, he had the speed for it, and it took a tough hop and kind of ate up Poles as he was retreating backwards. His feet weren't where they needed to be to make that strong throw. And then he ends up sailing it, and it goes over the head of the first baseman. Huff happened to chase after it, and everyone comes across the score. Here's a, here's a question for you. That ball took a sharp turn toward the line on Poles mm -hmm. on that last hop. He was about five feet in front of the bag. Do you chance ducking and seeing if it'll go foul in that one position? Or did he do the right thing by make, making the play? Well, I think I think they needed an out. Yeah. And looking at the hole in left field, I think that that ball would have ran. And yeah. he probably – with Grody and his speed, he would have had at least a triple, if not an inside the park home run. They checked on the runner at first, and Milosevic started dancing off third. <laughs> oh, one the count. Coleman takes the ball outside. Not a bad pitch. Pitch count is getting up there, though. It's sitting at 50 for Cowell. And that's something nice uh, here at Bowling Green. They actually have the pitch count on the scoreboard. That one way outside, 2-1. and one. 
Coleman wanted that one. He was able to hold back. Lots of leaning, but no hand movements. Runner took second on that last pitch. That one inside, three and one. So second and third, still nobody out. And a 3-1 count to Graydon Coleman. The next on its way, that one is launched foul. That may actually fair ball. <laughs> and it will get down. That one looked like it was going to go 40-foot foul. Yeah, I, th the wind really, really helped that. <laughs> wow. And it ends up dropping in around Blake Foster. I thought that one was halfway to the construction site out there. Yeah. Uh, well, it was halfway to the construction <laughs> site, just actually fair. Wow. That's a long single. It is. Very <laughs> a very long, long single. And a four to two lead for Bowling Green. Now bunting again. Bowling Green's already had two bunt hits, but this one foul. I think both teams have the same strategy. If they're if the other team can't field it or shows that they can't field it, you're going to have to make the adjustment. If not, I'm going to continue doing it until you do. Huber, behind in the count, 0-1. Long look from Reese Coel. Now he delivers and a swing and a miss. Huber was way out in front of that one. He was looking fastball, got the change up. So Brady in the hole, 0 and 2. Runners at first and third. That one fouled off the sidewall. And we'll do it again. Ooh, he Coel just hit Huber in the chest. Trying to throw the ball back to his catcher to get a new one. He's like, hey, get out of the way. <laughs> oh, he's laughing it off. I guess they're, yeah, they're was, all was, good. They're all good. It was a soft toss. Oh, yeah. But still, it, wasn't it the doesn't fastball. feel good. No. It's, it's cold outside. It's rainy. No one at the plate was expecting Reese Coel to toss that ball no. back in. All you can do is laugh. But those are the moments that replay in my mind. Mm hmm Still 0-2. Check on the runner again. That was a nice tag from Huff. Mm -hmm. He really sold it well. Yeah. And knowing Brady Huber since he was in daycare, that was such a Brady Huber thing to happen. <laughs> <laughs> to have the ball hit him? Yeah. 1-2 and two is that one that traveled up high. Ball and two strikes. And this one nubbed back to the pitcher. Do or die at the plate. He's safe. Probably a good move not to slide there. Yeah, he was able to just kind of scoot past the catcher, Condi, and he made a nice sweeping tag, but it was already past him, so there was really not much he could do to, to even try to save that. And it was a nice scoop move from Colwell, but just not in time. Huber reaches first, first and second. Still nobody out. It's 5-2 to two Bowling Green. All five coming in this inning, and that one is low. Good block by Condi behind the plate. 1-0. and oh. Fielder's choice for that one. Yeah, that's what I'd yeah. say. Because I don't know that Huber would have made it if they would have just turned to one. This one fought off into short right field down for a hit. They're going to try and score the run. The ball was bobbled out there in right field, and it's 6-2. to two. Coleman all the way around to score. Runner still at first and second. Still nobody out. That is a way to get an RBI there. McDonald just fought as hard as he could at that pitch in on his hands. And that's exactly what you want is to drive to the opposite field. And so that especially when runners are in scoring position, get that ball as far away as you can to try to get somebody plated. 
That is a strike called on the first pitch to Manny Orff. And with the wind, you have to play as deep as Van yeah. Parr's playing. You don't want to get burnt by any means. So dink and dunk your way to a 6-2 to two lead. That was a swinging bunt. That was something. 0-2. Oh he got <laughs> caught between a swing and a bunt. One-handed swing. So Orf, who seemed to do better once he picked up a, a two-strike count his mm -hmm. first time up, takes one up high. Some guys just like hitting 0-2. Yeah, the pressure does something for them. It turns up the intensity and the focus. The 1-2, low, runner goes, throw is into left field, and another run's going to come across on the air by Condi. No one was covering the bag. The third baseman was shaded in, so that was Pulse and Blake Foster was actually shaded towards center field more than anything, so it could have been a lot worse than it was. 7-2. Seven to two. A seven-run bottom of the third inning for the Bobcats. And still nobody out. That one up high. Had him 0-2, now 3-2. Keegan Smith on deck. He'd be the – this is the ninth man to bat this yes. inning, isn't it? Yep. He'll be turning it over to get to Smith. And they will. Still nobody out. A walk as that one was up and in to Manny Orff. And Keegan Smith will be the tenth man to the plate. And that will draw Coach Cameron Huff out of the dugout. And that is going to be all for the pitcher, Reese Coel. We're going to have a pitching change here in the bottom of the third inning. It is runners at first and second for the Bobcats. We'll take a break as they bring in the new pitcher here from Bowling Green High School on KJFM and WBBA. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwallader Real Estate, Geared Up, and Pike Lincoln Technical Center. Don't have time to stop by the bank? That's not a problem if you're a customer of People's Bank and Trust. With our mobile and online banking service, you can now bank from anywhere. Deposit checks, pay bills, transfer funds between accounts, check the latest activity on your account, and view images of your checks, all from the convenience of your desktop and smartphone. So start banking on your schedule and download the People's Bank and Trust app today. People's Bank and Trust, hometown banking the way it should be. Member FDIC. Everyone needs help with something at some point in their life. This is Tracy B. with PCHD, and I am here to remind you that we have certified community health workers staffed at our office that offer assistance for free to those who need help navigating local resources and more. Please don't hesitate to call 573-324-2111 to learn more or visit our website at pikecountyhealth.org. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by One Multi Sports Complex, Pike County Mutual Insurance Agents Corey Buchanan and Shelly Clucky, Gambino's Eatery, and Hannibal Medical Group. So the new pitcher will be the former catcher, Gibson Condi. The former pitcher will be the new catcher, Reese Coel. So just doing a little bit of a switch up here. Same battery. Yeah, same battery, just changing. Scratch that, yeah. reverse it. Yeah. If you want to go the Willy Wonka route. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch that. Reverse it. So, he comes into a tough situation, does Gibson Condi. Runners at first and second, nobody out, and Bowling Green has scored seven runs to uh, grab total momentum of this, this game. Yeah, and getting ready to turn that lineup over, and they've already batted all the way around getting to Smith here, but this top part of the lineup is, is your big and heavy hitters, so you're going to probably be in some trouble. You're going to have to work and throw strikes. So Keegan Smith, he let off this inning with? He had a bunt for a hit, and that's what got everything started in route to seven runs. Scored the first run for Bowling Green. 
and Condi. And that one goes back to the screen. Both runners will advance. Smith was flashing bunt again. Now he has two runners in scoring position to knock in. Zach Gibson on deck, then Brennan Scherter. Unless we have a line out triple play somehow. It would have been easier for the triple play before that pass ball. The 1 0. Hit in the air. Left center field. And making the catch is Gavin Gaston. The runner from third will tag and score to make it 8 to 2, Bowling Green. On the RBI sack fly by Keegan Smith. Gaston almost overran that ball, but I think that was once again the wind playing tricks on the center fielder. Mm -hmm. Back to the top of the order now for Gibson. Who likes where his team's at a whole lot more than when they started this inning as he's the pitcher of record. He takes a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Sometimes that first down is always the hardest one to get. Now Van Farr has got it. We'll see what they can do from here on out. Runner at second, one down. Condi delivers one in the dirt to even the count of the ball and a strike. Folks, trying to stay warm down low. We've kicked on the heater here in the broadcast booth. Maybe we should say it a little bit louder through our <laughs> open window. <laughs> Ball gets away from Coel, not far enough for the runner to advance, and the count goes to two and one. We are definitely spoiled here at Bowling Green, but, you know, we have sat through our fair share of cold, cold ball games. We have, and there's days where you're like, it's not that bad, and then all of a sudden you can't feel your fingers. This one deep into the hole, nice grab by Douglas, but he can't uh, make the throw. It was just too deep into the hole, and an infield hit for Gibson. That'll bring in Scherter. Runners at first and second now with one out. But now you got the double play in order. do. In his last at bat, Scherter bunted reach base. Home plate umpire pleading for some dry baseballs <laughs> out of the Bowling Green dugout. Rain has been off and on and had a downpour, but they had the tarp on the field, so had a little bit of a late start today. Scherter, the left-handed hitter, takes one outside on his first, the first pitch he sees from Gibson Condy. Condi from the stretch comes set. And this one hit to center field. Moving on it is Gaston. He makes the catch. Runners will have to retreat to first and second. There's two away. Nice line drive from Scherter and just getting a good piece of that. As he struck out the, his first at bat, he bunted his last, but this one he was able to drive it to center field and not a bad swing. That'll bring in Milosevic. Trying to get another run across. He had two RBIs his last at bat. That one's coming up toward us. That hit the side of the visiting football bleachers. Took an odd carom. Sounded pretty hollow. Usually we have a loud clatter whenever a fi uh, fi uh, foul ball finds its way up here. 0 oh 1, 2 Rowan. Make it 0-2 as that one's called a strike on the outside corner. Condi has his sign. Runners take their leads off first and second. And the 1-2 pitches, or excuse me, 0-2 pitch is taken for a ball. Now 1-2. Condi, just a little bit different look than mm -hmm. the starter, Coel. Has a little bit more of a hunch. Both mm -hmm. pitchers had a pretty high kick, but 
Yeah. He's hunched over a little bit more. That one high and in. Two and two. So the deuces are wild. Two on, two out, two balls, two strikes to the catcher, Rowan Milosevic. The pitch hit him. Base is loaded again. Now you got to force at any base. And the batter will be the cleanup hitter, Eli Grody. His last step at, he hit a ground ball to third base. Was able to get a run in as... It was a tough play for Pulse. He reached base. First base coach Mike Jennings had just pockets full of guards and gloves. The on-deck hitter, Graydon Coleman, I think needed one of those guards, so he <laughs> ran all the way down there and got them. He's like, please take them. Get them out of my pockets. Heck, that's insulation on a day like this. Oh, a yeah. strike called on the first pitch to Grody. Bases loaded, two down. Condi's pitch swung on and missed. He missed that one by 18 inches. Yeah, he was really guessing at that, waving at that last pitch. No balls, two strikes to the Bobcat first baseman. Gibson Condi comes set from the stretch. Misses the corner. One and two. That was close. Condi has the sign. Comes set again. A one two pitch. Swung on and missed. And Bowling Green leaves the bases loaded, but they score eight times in the home half of the third inning and now lead the Van Far Indians eight to two as we head to the fourth on KJFM and WBBA Sports. Area High School Sports coverage brought to you all season long by Rick Rodhouse Insurance Agency, People's Bank and Trust, Pike County Health Department, and Missouri State Representative Chad Perkins. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game, and game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. Your car, your stuff, your savings. Combine your auto and renter's insurance with a call to State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana and let Cindy show you how to put life back in your life insurance. Auto, home, and life. Make your wallet happy. Here to help life go right, State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by A Taste of Philly, State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock, Central State Bank of Illinois, and Eolia Landscape Supply. As we get ready to start the fourth inning of play, it's the Bowling Green Bobcats leading the Van Far Indians 8-2 to two after the Bobcats were able to put up an eight spot in the bottom of the third inning. Mm -hmm. Still on the pitcher's bump for the Bobcats, it will be Gibson, and he's racked up the strikeouts today. He already has seven as the throw goes down, and we'll be ready for baseball as soon as the hitter is ready. Well, whatever we've gotten here, I think it may have been worse south of here. Yeah. Although we did have some reports of some uh, activity around the Van Far area and uh, Louisiana. Yeah. Lots of hail in the area as well. Leading off, it'll be Sanich, and then it'll be Hopke and Gaston for the Indians. The first pitch is taken for a strike on the outside corner. I really didn't think we'd see baseball today. I did not either. But that tarp really, really helped. And, and something that we didn't have here in years past. Next pitch swinging as well. 0-2 quickly to Sanich. And they're going to ask for a new baseball as the one that they got back somehow is wet. Well, we don't have an unlimited supply like they do in MLB. No, we do not. Next pitch, swung on and missed. Make that strikeout number eight of the day. They're going to throw it around the horn. And that'll bring in Hopke. Gibson's looked like a, a veteran, a senior pitcher here he this afternoon. <laughs> you can definitely tell he has some experience in this role. 
He struck out Hockey the first time around. Gets him on a check swing there. Are they going to say that he went or? No, they're going to call it for a ball. Was maybe an inch from hitting him. Yeah. And he kind of casted his hands outward. This one grounded to the first baseman. Boy, Brody's really going to have to be quick covering the bag and making the tag. It was Gibson for out number two. That ball just dies on this wet infield grass, doesn't it? It does, and that makes it really tough, but great for speedy runners. Not only did uh, the first baseman Grody have to be quick, but the pitcher Gibson had to be real quick to get over there and cover the bag. Yeah, and make sure you don't slide and fall down. Mm -hmm. First pitch is popped into the air in foul territory and caught. Good read at first base by Eli Grody. For out number three, we are headed to the bottom of the fourth inning. Bobcats lead the Indians 8-2 to two on KJFM WBBA Sports. High School Sports coverage brought to you all season long by NOAA Builders, Castile's Color Wheel, Eagle's Nest Inn, People's Savings Bank, and Pepsi. At Central State Bank, you're not just an account. You're a person with hopes, dreams, and family that you work hard to provide for, which is why at Central State Bank, they work hard to help you with checking and savings accounts, business and personal loans, along with investments. It's because when it comes right down to it, banking isn't simply about money. It's about helping people make their dreams come true. Central State Bank, central to your banking needs with locations in Pleasant Hill, Pittsfield, Kinderhook, Quincy, and Clayton. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Cellular and Satellite, Pike County Memorial Hospital, Eccles Farm Market, and Community State Bank of Missouri. After a quick top half of the fourth there, we are That was the first in. inning yeah. that uh, Van Farr didn't get a runner on it or the, the leadoff batter to, to reach base. That so. was a very quick and effective inning and exactly what you want if you're a Bobcats fan because you're going to keep Gibson in the game just a little bit longer. Bobcats have an 8-2 to two lead looking to add on here. It'll be 5-6-7. Coleman, Huber, McDonald trying to get things started again. We talked about the switch last inning and it is Condi on the bump for the Indians behind the plate. It's Coel. And now that uh, in a seven-inning game we're past that uh, top of the, the fourth inning, that we're official now. We are. So if the rain decides to make its appearance once again and rain this one out, we do have that official scoring that could come into play. First pitch, Coleman sees is low and outside for ball number one. Thought the wind would be a little bit more of a factor. It played havoc in the early innings, but everyone seems to have adjusted. 1-0 pitch, make it 2-0 as that one bounces over the shoulder of Cowell and heads to the backstop. Now Condi in his second inning of work, so Bowling Green's gotten to see him a little bit. He recorded all three outs after the eight runs came across last inning. So all eight were charged to Reese Cowell. Impressive for him to come in and shut that down. He's got to come back here against Coleman, though. The next pitch, he tosses high and inside, making it 3-0. Well, and that, that can be the, the worst thing for a relief pitcher. You come in, high-pressure situation, you get the three outs, and then you go and sit. Yeah. The adrenaline was pumping. He kind of found a groove, and he overcooks that one. It goes to the backstop. Coleman's going to trot down to first base as he's walked. Four pitch walk and that'll bring in Brady Huber. Who's flashed his speed today, not only on the base pass, but in center field. Reached on a fielder's choice, his last at bat. Before that, he had a single to center field. Coleman takes his lead at first base. Gets a peek from Condi, as he comes set, rears back and throws the first pitch. It goes through the legs of Colwell, heads to the backstop, and Coleman will take second base easily. So five straight out of the zone, and now Bowling Green threatening again here in the home half of the fourth with the runner in scoring position. Let's see what Huber does here as he's getting a call from the third baseline from Coach Matt Jane, standing up at second base to Coleman. Next pitch, 
from Condi. Low and outside. Good block by Cowell. Got to dial it in here. Maybe take a little walk around the base of that mound. He's going to do a little landscaping before he gets back up there. Condi fires this one right down the middle, and it's called for a strike. 2-1 to get him back in this count. Peeks back at Coleman, who is about three steps off the bag and tosses the next pitch in, and it's high and inside. 3-1. Already up to 25 pitches in his second inning of work. A couple of steps in front of the bag at third, a couple behind at first. Next pitch. Can't get a good hold on it, but they are going to call it for a strike. Catches the outside corner, making it 3-2. So Hubert digs back in as the umpire flashes the 3-2 to let everyone know what's going on. Condi, next pitch is swung on and missed. It goes to the backstop, though. They're going to toss it down to first base off the bag was Huff. So Hubert is safe and advancing to third. It's Coleman. So first and third for the Bobcats with no outs. He just wasn't positioned right. I don't. Th I think he kind of lost himself a little bit. The throw was there in time, but he was just a foot in front of the bag. So wipe the result of the strike up off the board. Runners at first and second, nobody down. Actually, first and third as the runner advanced on that throw. Taking off is Huber, so he'll take – Second base easily, but strike one is called on the outside. I think Huff's a little upset with himself. He's was down in a crouch position at first. Now he's dancing around. McDonald is two for two today. This one is cooked into the ground, skips over the shoulder of the catcher, but getting to it quickly and keeping the runner at third base. Good job by Cowell. So runners stay put, second and third for McDonald, who has had a couple of singles to the grass today. 1-1 one, one count. Nobody out. He goes chasing upstairs, making it one and two. Condi looking for the first out for the Indians in this bottom half of the inning. Next one gets past Colwell and bounces off the backstop and a one hop, and Coleman is forced to retreat back to third base. Yeah, they've been getting some really fortunate hops yeah. Van Farr has off that backstop. Especially it not being their home field. They're mm. reading it well, too. Yeah. 2-2 with McDonald at the plate. Pitch is to the backstop. This one, it died, but Coleman stays at third base. He'll get a talking to from Coach Matt Jane. Yeah, he was watching the, the hand of the hitter instead of the verbal instruction from his head coach. Count is full. Daniel chose his bat. Now comes set. Swings and misses. Condi records the strikeout. Second strikeout of the inning. The first that will count for an out. Brings in Orf, who has struck out and walked today. But both at bat, he's flash bunt on the first couple of, of pitches. You know, I, I've been trying all game to work in Manny being Manny, <laughs> and it just has not uh, presented the opportunity yet. <laughs> Off speed and confuses Colwell. It gets under his glove. Coleman's going to take home. He dives head first to tack on another run for the Bobcats. Nine to two. Up to a seven-run lead for Bowling Green. 
here in the home half of the fourth inning. Runner advances to third base as well with a 1-0 count and one down. Now the home plate umpire stepped out. Not sure what he's... I don't know if he's looking for another baseball. I'm. No, I think they're going to make a change in right field. Yep, they are. Looks like... I think it's... I think it's an 18, maybe. Yeah. That'll be Landon Flowers taking over. I wonder if they're going to warm up uh, a new pitcher or if they're eventually going to have a – no, they're not going to have a pitching change because – They're having a catching change. Yeah. Okay. Because Condi is now playing catch with uh, his first baseman. That's interesting, and it might just be a stall tactic. Right. Try and get uh, just some sort of change in momentum. Mm -hmm. Couple of pass balls, but not and, enough. And we to don't know. I yeah. He may have, you know, taken one of those. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a cold day. You yeah. could easily easily get a contusion. Yeah. Or twist something in this wet grass. Oh, yeah. So, again, the new right fielder is Flowers. Yes, it'll be Landon Flowers. He'll be taking over <laughs> in right field. And it looks like Branson I Salmon. I think that's. So, did we go double switch? We'll have to check on that. We'll have to check on the numbers because. We know Condi's pitching, yeah, so. It didn't look like a one hidden under yeah. the catcher's gear, so. We'll have to check in on who our catcher is, but nice block in his first pitch that he sees. I, I think it might be Hopke. There is that seven, so, or excuse me, number one. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a small single digit under the, <laughs> the catching gear. 2-0 the count with the runner at third base. Pitches inside, backing or off the plate, 3-0. Another good block. So he's sliding well from side to side. As Condi comes set, his next pitch is in the dirt, gets past Hopke. Crashing home and taking it, standing up. That was Huber. Make it ten to two, Bobcats. The pitch was was ball four as well. So a runner at first now with one out, as that run comes in to put Bowling Green into double digits. Keegan Smith, the nine hole. He had a sack fly to center field his last at bat. Picked up the RBI. Bowling Green wants to push two more across. If they do that, they put themselves in a position to end it next half inning. First pitch grounded to the third baseman. Pulses up with it. Throw is wide. Huff is going to have to make a tag, and he drops it in that process. Runner is safe at first base. Yep, he scooped it. The ball stayed on the ground. He went for the swipe tag, and... It was still sitting there on the wet turf. So that'll be an error. And Bowling Green has runners at first and second with one out. Turns the lineup over. It'll be Gibson at the plate. He had an infield hit to shortstop his last at bat. Before that, he walked and then had a triple to center field. He led the game off with that big triple. Took a strike. Gets the call from... Coach Matt Jane, I think it may primarily be for the runners as Gibson moves up in the batter's box. A lot of movement before settling and waiting for the pitch from Condi. Mm. He chops this one down that third baseline. Coach that probably didn't feel good. Yeah, Coach Jane tried to swipe that one and came up empty or came up with a sore hand. 0-2 the count. 
to Zach Gibson. Just one out. And runner is at first and second base. They'll take their lead as Condi toes the rubber. Come set. Next pitch is off speed. Runner at second base takes off. That's Orf, and he is safe at third base. Pitch was a strike, so that was strike three. He tagged him. Got so caught that's second out. There. So out number two. Put another runner in scoring position, and a runner now standing at second base as well. That's a potential 10 run runner out there at second base. Brings in Scherter, the only left handed hitter for mm. the Bobcats. Goes off speed and high. Swings out of his shoes, so it's strike one. Bobcats scored eight in the bottom of the third inning. Have tacked on another two here. And that pitch just a little bit outside. Ooh. One and one. Looked pretty good. Bowling Green really wants both these runners across. Next pitch from Condi. This one grounded up the middle. Shortstop wants it up with a throw, and it's a strike over to first base for the out. Malik Douglas records it, the out and keeps the Indians alive. We are headed to the top of the fifth inning, 10 to 2. Our score, Bowling Green leads on KJFM WBBA Sports. Area sports coverage brought to you all season long by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats, State Farm agents Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, Meyer Implement Company, and Ingram Plumbing. NOAA Builders in Silex is a proud supporter of all area athletes. They're a small locally owned contractor with over 25 years of experience in custom and new home construction. NOAA Builders wants to take your forever home plan and make it a reality. Call or visit NOAA Builders at noahbuildersinc.com. The Eagle's Nest Inn Bed and Breakfast in Louisiana is where history, comfort, and charm come together. Explore quaint streets, visit local attractions, and return to comfort at the end of the day. Call or book online at theeaglesnestinbb.com. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwallader Real Estate, Geared Up, and Pike Lincoln Technical Center. Bobcats are leading this one 10 to 2. And it's Gibson who is towing the rubber. You can see a, a trail of the pitcher walking from the uh -huh. bump to home. And that's just talking about how muddy it is. We've had some rain on and off all day, and especially this evening. So wet, it's slick, but that's slowing things down. So that's something to keep in mind when wanting to get base runners on. Well, that's just a, a reminder of Bowling Green's big inning, too, with all the uh, bunts. Oh, yeah. That we had. That pitcher was coming in hard. 1 0, and the next pitch is right down the middle to even things up 1 and 1. At the plate, it'll be 9 1 2 for the Indians. Right now, it's Pulse as he pokes this one foul down the first baseline. Goes bouncing toward the Van Farr dugout, returned by first base coach for the Indians. Remains 0 and 2. As Gibson comes set, rears back his next pitch, has some nice and wicked movement to it. Record another strikeout of, on the day. He's into double digits now, isn't he? I believe so. He is at 56 pitches here in the top of the fifth inning. So he's got a ways to go. First pitch is tossed outside to the leadoff hitter, Malik Douglas. One zero, and that pitch was catching a corner, a little bit low. But they do call it for a strike to even it up at one and one with one out. On deck, it'll be Gibson Condi. Who? <laughs> that pitch went wide, didn't get on top of it. Looked like it uh, may have slipped a little bit coming out of the hand. Two one. 
one is foul tipped but held on to by Milosevic, evening it, evening it up at two and two. Base is empty, one down. Pitch number 61 coming from Gibson. And catches him looking for another strikeout there. And it's Douglas that goes down to bring in Condi. Started this game behind the plate. Now he's the pitcher. Giving up two runs. That was last inning. 11 strikeouts on the day for Gibson. And he tosses strike number one to Condi, who has been a strikeout victim, a looking strikeout victim in both plate appearances. He watches the pitch go on the outside, one and one. One one is fouled back to make it one two. He had a quick top of the fourth inning, looking to go one, two, three here again in the top of the fifth inning. Gets him swinging there. Make it strikeout number 12. We are headed to the bottom of the fifth. Bowling Green leads Van Farr 10 to 2 on KJFM WBBA Sports. Area sports coverage brought to you all season long by One Multi Sports Complex, Pike County Mutual Insurance Agents Corey Buchanan and Shelly Clucky, Gambino's Eatery, and Hannibal Medical Group. Castiel Color Wheel has been proudly serving Pittsfield and the surrounding communities since 1950 and is an expanded retail area. They began as a paint retailer handling Benjamin Moore and Pittsburgh paints, developing into a full-service decorating center, including wall coverings and Hunter Douglas custom window treatments. Castiel over the years has expanded with home decor, high-quality gift items, bridal and baby registry, an upscale ladies' and children's boutique, open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 until noon. Let Castiel's be your one-stop shop located just off the northwest corner of the square in Pittsfield. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Rick Rodhouse Insurance Agency, People's Bank and Trust, Pike County Health Department, and Missouri State Representative Chad Perkins. Bottom of the fifth inning. If the Bobcats can tack on two, they will end this game in a run rule fashion. Part of their lineup, it'll be 3-4-5. Milosevic, Grody, Coleman do up for Bowling Green. They've uh, gotten contributions up and down the lineup. They have. In this ball game. Been able to play some small ball. They have not looked like a, a team that has only three wins this season. Yeah, they. we were talking about that a little bit in the pregame show, but they still play those bigger schools. Mm -hmm. They still play – that more competitive schedule, which is always what you want. But that does reflect on your record, and and especially with some of the EMO conference teams that we face, we may not see as strong of a team yeah. um, that they're seeing normally with their schedule. We were supposed to have uh, Bowling Green Silex on Tuesday. That game was preemptively rained out. They yeah. called it, and then it didn't rain another drop yeah. the rest of the day. So I think that's why they, they stuck with this one mm -hmm. as long as they did. But uh, that game got rescheduled for the 24th. Yes, so that is next Wednesday. Open dates on the schedule are getting fewer and farther between. So you got to try and play the games when you can. Yeah, and typically Wednesday is that open day for some mm -hmm. reason. So you're probably, if you have a team that's canceled and you're wanting to go watch their games, you're probably going to be seeing baseball diamonds, softball diamonds on a lot of Wednesdays. Deep fly to right field, crashing in, and it drops in in front of the right fielder. And that will be a long single that hung up in the air for Milosevic. He has hit two really, really long singles <laughs> in this ball game. That one hung up in the air for so long, and – and you just had Flowers come into the game last <laughs> inning. Yeah. And I think that may have – he's just not used to tracking, especially yeah. in the win we have here today. He hasn't had the four previous innings really to, to look at a, b a baseball. So a long single to Ooh. start the inning, and that pitch goes wide. Standing up at second base, it'll be Milosevic. I don't think he pulled back. No, he offered at that. Yeah. And I don't think either umpire noticed. No. So they're going to call it a ball, which. He, he definitely offered it that day. Yeah. Pitch. He never moved his back. He so. moved it forward toward the ball is what he did. Yeah. I thought it, with as much movement as it had, I would have told you that it was a foul ball. Yeah. 
But it's not, and Milosevic is standing at second base, and it's Grody in the box. He sees a pitch on the outside corner. It even stings up at 1-1. One one. I am very surprised that there wasn't any sort of argument from the Van Far side on that because no. he stabbed at that ball, but it was so up and in that no one was paying attention. Yeah, I think I think maybe they were paying attention to the runner and the uh -huh. dugout, but – yeah, that that was a missed call all around. Swing and a miss. Gibson got tied up. Or, excuse me. Um, that was Grody that got tied up. One and two. We have so many Gibsons on the yeah, field. That's I, all that I can think yeah, about. Yeah, you, I, you <laughs> got like a, a one in three chance, I think. <laughs> if you say Gibson, you might be right. Somebody's head's going to turn. Grody digs back in on the right side. He's able to hold back on a pitch that was meant for him to chase. Two and two. He's the potential game-ending run at the plate. The on-deck circle, it's Coleman. Taking his time, Condi sends this one into the dirt. Milosevic will take third base over the shoulder of Hopke, and he is able to retreat back to home plate and keep Milosevic at third. 3-2 now the count. Had him 1-2, and two, now 3-2. and two. Pace of play has significantly slowed down since that long half inning where the Bobcats posted eight. And the rain has started again. Grody. Ooh, that was close. And it was just a little bit high is what the umpire is saying. So he will pick up the walk. He'll head to first base. And that puts runners at the corners for Bowling Green. And I like uh, I like Coleman up in this situation. Yeah, he's drove the ball to the grass a couple of times. He had a single in his second at bat. And he sees a pitch on the outside called for a strike. On runner the river. took second. So now the game ending runner is in scoring position. You poke this into right, the game's over. Coleman has a wide stance, takes up the batter's box. He drives it up the middle. It gets down. One run comes across, and here comes Grody. They're sending him to. The throw comes in. Grody's going to stand up, and that's going to be the end of this ball game. 12-2, to two, Bowling Green defeats Van Farr in walk-off fashion. We'll wrap this one up in the postgame show next on KJFM WBBA Sports. <laughs> Eagle 102 Post Game Show is coming up. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by A Taste of Philly, State Farm Insurance Agent Cindy Blaylock, Central State Bank of Illinois, and Eolia Landscape Supply. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Ask me, Ashley Jenkins, about Shelter's auto, home, and life options. Sailor and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Now, a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by NOAA Builders, Castile's Color Wheel, Eagle's Nest Inn, People's Savings Bank, and Pepsi. Time now for the Eagle 102 Post Game Show on KJFM. Final in this one in five innings, the Bowling Green Bobcats defeat the Van Far Indians 12-2. Mark Frontick, Matty Ingram back here at Bowling Green High School. And, Matty, this uh, 
when it was a 2 nothing Van Farr lead, it, it seemed like a huge lead on, on a day like this. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Bowling Green, behind the pitching of Zach Gibson, uh, held it together long enough for the offense to wake up, and they, they did big time with that uh, eight-run third inning. Yeah, Bowling Green really had to respond. They were in a position where they made a couple of errors, and you could tell that no one was happy about it. But you had Zach Gibson, who was just – completely locked in today he he threw five innings for the Bobcats racked up 12 strikeouts ended up striking out the side I want to say three times in a row mm -hmm. um, so when you have a pitcher that's going out there and putting all of that work in you want to do something behind him and that's exactly what Bowling Green did and they were able to come out on the side of victory here. Well, the, the first uh, six guys I mean you had Gibson with the, the triple but he was stranded at uh, third base in the first inning. But uh, it, it was kind of dead the first time through the order. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bowling Green, and, and uh, give credit to uh, Coach Jane, used small ball, a couple of bunts, uh, to, to get this offense rolling from that 7, 8, 9 position. Yeah, and you have some speed with the Bobcats. And so when you're able to execute and do those little things right, it also starts some momentum in the dugout. Well, he did it, so I can do it. And so when everybody was coming up there with that mentality and that approach, I think that it definitely – helped them in their attempt to score runs and they were also listening to their coach they had some really smart base running whenever they were listening to coach Jane and rounding that corner there was no looking back and that's how they were able to put pressure on the defense so it took him to the very last second to get us a lineup but it was the right lineup today it against Van Farr. <laughs> 12 to 2 in five innings we'll take a break come back and wrap things up with the final numbers after this on KJFM and WBBA <laughs> Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Cellular and Satellite, Pike County Memorial Hospital, Eccles Farm Market, and Community State Bank of Missouri. I'm Tylee Mills, the CEO of Pike County Memorial Hospital. You've heard it from your friends, family, and even neighbors. They choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. Quality care from quality people. Pike County Memorial Hospital. Ackles Farm Market has locally produced beef, pork, and honey. Stop in for your farm fresh cut ribeye, New York strip, sirloin steaks, fillets, stew meat, ribs, ground beef, snack sticks, and all beef hot dogs. While there, stock up on homegrown fruits and vegetables as well. Open every day, 9 to 7. Ackles Farm Market, just off Highway 54 between Louisiana and Pittsfield. Area high school sports coverage brought to you all season long by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats, State Farm agents Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, Meyer Implement Company, and Ingram Plumbing. 12 to 2 in five innings, Bowling Green over Van Farr. And uh, for Van Farr, they had one in the second, one in the third inning. Bowling Green comes back with an eight run bottom of the third inning, and then add two each in the uh, fourth, fourth and fifth. Two. And uh, take this game uh, by 10 in five innings. Yeah, they were able to capitalize. And as we mentioned already, there was contributions from up and down the lineup, which helped Bowling Green come out on the side of victory, which you don't always see that. Normally, you know, you think you're heart of the lineup. If you want to win a game, you, you look to the heart of the lineup. But they were able to get contributions from all over, get base runners on, and capitalize in those positions as well, which is that's how good teams win games. What did uh, Gibson end up with uh, strikeout-wise? Yeah, he had 12 strikeouts over five innings and only one earned run. Um, there was a walk and then a couple of uh, error throws, and so that's how the other run scored. But he gave up one earned run, 12 strikeouts over five innings. He's the winning pitcher uh, for Bowling Green, and the uh, loss goes to Coel here in the uh, five-inning Bowling Green victory. Yeah, so uh, congratulations to the Bobca Bobcats on picking up their fourth win of the season. And so um, an EMO conference loss for the Van Farr Indians. Happy to get this one in as the rain has been has been a factor today and this week. So best of luck to both of these teams as they roll into next week and our season is kind of winding down. But Bowling Green picks up the win 12-2 to today from Maddie and Mark saying see you next week for high school baseball and softball. You've been listening to Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Join us each week as we bring you the best of Area High School Sports on air at 102.1, online at kjfmradio.com, and on the KJFM Radio app. You can find a full recap of scores online and daily during Eagle 102 Sports, all from your area sports leader, KJFM Radio.